for tuning into this bonus episode of Talking Cars. I'm Mike Quincy. I'm Alex Nizek. And I'm Mike Monticello. And we've got a really hot topic going on today about regen braking and whether or not the brake lights in your EV actually illuminate when you come to a stop. We just posted a fantastic article at consumerreports.org, and we got this great question from Kevin from Louisville, Kentucky, talking about this exact subject matter. Kevin writes, I was alarmed to learn recently that some cars don't turn their brake lights on when using regen braking, most notably when using one pedal driving. This seems very dangerous, and the driver of, a, of the offending car would have no idea if it's happening. Can you address this issue? I believe this phenomenon warrants an investigation by the CRT. In the time since we shot this bonus episode, Hyundai Genesis as well as Kia have responded to our test findings, indicating that all three companies are working on a solution to be deployed this summer that will make their EVs safer during regenerative braking. In this episode, we unpack all of our testing details related to what we found. And even though these three companies are addressing this issue without any specific laws on the books related to this matter, it could still affect future EVs. That's why we think it's important for consumers and owners of these vehicles to be aware. Plus, we found a separate regenerative braking issue affecting Mercedes-Benz EVs. Well, Kevin, we are definitely going to dig deep into this as we have very recently. And uh, Mike Monticello, you, you covered this issue in a, a superb story and summed it up so well with a line, breaking without brake lights, which, uh, again, we, we'll get to it in a few seconds. But before we get into this, can you explain uh, exactly what one pedal driving is? Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going to get into this, this, uh, a lot of research that Alex and the team did, but for, you know, to find out what's going on with this regenerative braking and, and brake lights illuminating or not illuminating. But the first thing is what's one pedal driving one pedal driving is, is a, basically an aggressive version of regenerative braking and regenerative braking is basically what happens when an EV, uh, is coasting. It's, uh, recouping some energy. It's slowing the car down and recouping some energy, sending it back to the battery. Uh, now, one pedal driving is basically you're using a very aggressive version of uh, regenerative braking. And with these EVs, you can adjust them either with the pa you know paddle shifters or within the uh, infotainment screen. So you can set different levels. When you set it to this aggressive uh, one pedal driving, it's called one pedal driving because now basically think of the accelerator pedal uh, is now going to handle accelerating and braking for you. So every time you press down on the accelerator pedal, the car goes faster. We all know that. But mm -hmm. now when you let off in one pedal drive and you let off even a little bit, it starts slowing the car down. It's not, you don't have to it, go all the way off. You can, but it's going to, in one pedal drive and it's going to really slow the car down quickly. Mm -hmm. So you're actually modulating the th accelerator pedal for both accelerating and braking. Mm -hmm. So if you want it to, you know, slow down quickly, you really come off quickly, mm -hmm. but you can just kind of bring it off a little bit, then right. put it back on, you know, and so that's one pedal driving in true one pedal driving means you can actually come to a complete stop without ever having to touch the brake pedal. Now you have right. to do, it kind of becomes, it's kind of like a game. You're trying right. to figure out when am I going to fully let off the accelerator pedal. Right to come to a full stop, you know, behind another car at a, a stoplight or whatever. Uh, so that's one pedal driving, but there's a whole lot more going into this than, than like that we're about to talk about right. <laughs> and a whole bunch of research because there was, we found out some interesting stuff about EVs and one pedal driving. Yeah, right. There was this video that kind of circulated online and maybe um, you saw it as well, but we certainly did. And it was bringing up this exact issue. And the example was on a Hyundai Ioniq 5, right? An EV. It was a, a 2021 or two. 2022. 2022. Yep. Thank you. And um, yeah, so basically with this vehicle and in the video, as the demonstration shows, is only when the driver, when using one pedal driving, um, when they let their foot fully off the accelerator pedal, so taking full, you know, full deceleration when in this mode, only then will the brake lights come on. Any kind of pressure on the accelerator pedal um, would turn the lights off. And what that means, based on how you just described the system, is you can be decelerating in this vehicle at a pretty decent rate, like a noticeable deceleration and no brake lights. And the person behind you does no idea what you're would doing. Would have no, no idea. No idea. And you can... Right almost bring the vehicle to a complete stop without the lights ever coming on. So this guy and his team <laughs> then tested, we have folks, we have 24 EVs. I didn't even know we had that many, but yeah, we, we have, have 24 a, EVs every EV. and they then spent a couple days trying to find out how common is this? Is it just the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or is it other EVs? What's right, going on here? Right, so right. just tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe the, 
the uh, G-force levels mm -hmm. and when you think they should be coming right. on versus when they are and which ones were the ones that didn't right. come on. Yeah, so we found the issue with almost all of the Hyundai Genesis Kia vehicles, right? Or the EVs, rather. Yep. So um, certainly the Ionic 5, but also EV6, Genesis GV60, um, some of the other models. Electrified GV70, yeah, the Genesis, yep. uh, and the Kia Nero EV. Yes, also the Nero. Yep. Um, yeah, so they were the only brand or, or parent company with these vehicles that displayed this issue, which was good. We were happy to see that this wasn't and then more prevalent. the Hyundai Ionic 6, our 2023 Correct. Hyundai Ionic 6, does not does do Does not it. do it. It, it behaves so the way you would want. The way you would want, yeah. exactly. Yeah, wow. so... Seemingly, Hyundai was aware of this and they fixed it. Um, so we reached out to them to basically say, uh, or Mike reached out to, to yep. ask if that same logic that seems to have been applied to the newer Hyundai Ionic 6 would either be put onto the older cars via software update or at the very least, you know, Hyundai Ionic 5s being built from here forward would get that new logic too. Right. So we reached out, and I'm sorry, this is a back and forth. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Go for it. a total group effort yeah, 100%. Uh, on, on ATC cool. Auto Test Center. Uh, lots of back and forth with me and Alex and plenty of other people. Uh, and so we... I reached out to uh, Hyundai. I reached out to Kia separately because Kia likes to kind of pretend that they're separate from <laughs> Hyundai. <laughs> and um, so uh, <laughs> Hyundai and Kia both responded and the Hyundai representative said, this is covered. Look, this is our statement is covering Hyundai, Kia and Genesis. And they said, uh, basically, let me put it this way. And we also reached out to NHTSA, National, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, mm -hmm. to right. find out what's going on there. And basically we got a bunch of non-answer answers, but right. just let me read what Hyundai said. Hyundai said, Hyundai is aware of the customer concerns regarding EV brake light illumination. Hyundai engineering teams are investigating and reviewing our EV braking strategies. All Hyundai Motor Group electric vehicles meet the FMVSS uh, number 108 standard that regulates all automotive lighting. Hyundai is committed to vehicle safety and the well-being of our customers. Um, and so, you know, they're basically saying <laughs> they're basically saying as long as the uh, um, federal motor vehicle safety standard does not say our brake lights have to come on, then uh, then they're they're not saying they're not saying they're not going to do anything about it. But they're saying we're fine. We're, we're yeah, doing it according to the letter of the law. law. The law. Right. I, I mean, the, 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 the line in, in your story that that certainly jumped out at me is this, the U.S. government does not have an explicit standard regarding deceleration levels for activating brake. Lights. Right. Here's what Correct. it is. So uh, it says FMV. Am I saying this right? SS number 108 states stop mm -hmm. lamps, stop lamps on each vehicle must be activated upon application of the service brakes. When the service brakes are not applied, the standard doesn't uh, does not require the stop lamps to be activated. Right, right. And, so, and by service brakes, they mean the actual the physical. Friction, right. Yeah, but, right. but this was probably written before even EVs were on the horizon. Right. So yeah. we reached out right. to NHTSA, right? National right. Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and a spokesperson for them got back to us. And again, it was another one of these kind of non-answer answers. Uh, they just keep going back to the to the the co safety code, right? right. And right, this right, is what's right. on the books. The law says federal this. motor ve vehicle safety standard number one hundred eight. You know, does not basically this is what they said does not require uh, the lamps stop lamps to be activated at a specific level of deceleration. And they also said the agency will be discussing these stop lamp issues with the respective manufacturers during the regularly scheduled meetings with NHTSA. NHTSA currently does not have any open rulemakings to mm. establish a new requirement on this topic, which is a little bit eye opening. Yeah. Right. Especially considering the growing number of people interested in buying EVs. Right. And now, Alex, do you want to we kind of we want to do something. So yeah, we certainly. made a kind of a recommendation. Tell us what you would yeah. recommend that the Hyundai Kia Genesis EV drivers do. Right, right. So, well, so first of all, um, you know, while testing, we we put a G meter in the car, right, under with all 24 EVs that we tested just to see in general where each one was kind of activating their brake lights. And, you know, 0.15 Gs was kind of the most we saw and, to, you know, most deceleration until the, the lamps came on. Um, and we felt that, you know, 0.1 0.15 is actually pretty good. You know, that's light deceleration, but it's noticeable to passengers. So we that was kind of our recommendation to both automakers, but also to, to let NHTSA know, hey, we 
tried this out on a bunch of things and this is kind of you know that wasn't just my Meaning gut feeling we but. think if a vehicle is slowing down at 0.1 g or more the the brake lights should be coming up correct is that correct? Okay. correct and we also compared that to you know how much does a gas vehicle decelerate if you were to just left let off the accelerator and let it just coast down it makes somewhere around that amount right mm -hmm. um so that was number one and then specifically for uh you know hyundai genesis kia drivers other than those who have an ionic six um is to if you're going to use one pedal, um, keep or let off fully, right? It might not be the most pleasant way to use that system is to just instantly let off if you're going to decelerate. But if you are let off that way, the brake lights come on. Same thing with actually level three. So these cars yeah. let you with the paddle shifters or not shifters, but paddles on the steering wheel go through zero, one, two, three full one pedal and, mm -hmm. and yeah and the one pedal they call it uh they call it i pedal right so right. level four in a sense is i yeah exactly and that's so, their one pedal driving right yeah. and we found that with level three in all of these cars it decelerates almost as much you know not quite as hard but enough certainly well over the the point one um and the behavior is still there if you're slightly on the the accelerator pedal the lights won't come on so we would say try to avoid using i pedal or full one pedal as well as level three so and use level one or two. Correct. Or zero. Or zero. One. And and the nice thing about that is you're not actually losing the benefits of regenerative braking because these vehicles use what's called a blended braking system. If you press the brake pedal, the real brake pedal, it'll regen as much as it can first before applying the friction right. brakes. You're actually not really losing anything. You're just kind of losing the convenience of the, the one pedal. So. Right. So in the process of our testing, we also had a few discoveries with our Mercedes EV models, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of interesting, actually. So we were testing for something else and we found this other kind of oddity. And that right. is that when you have uh, one of these Mercedes EVs set to its strong recuperation regen mode, which is Mercedes' term for one pedal driving, yep. uh, the brake lights do come on. Mm -hmm. But then right as around when it's slowing down to about five miles per hour, the rate of deceleration, correct me if I'm wrong here, Alex, the rate of deceleration slows down in a sense because it's the system's trying to make sure you come to a smoother stop yeah, when you come to a full stop right so at that pressure. point so the brake lights were on because you were slowing down pretty aggressively with this uh, strong regen uh, one pedal driving right as you're about to come to a stop the brake lights turn off yeah yes. and then they stay off for about 15 seconds in total from when they turned off to when they turned back they will automatically turn back on after 15 seconds mm -hmm. but the fact is you've come to a stop and there's no brake lights and anyone coming up behind you, first of all, they might not understand your, they, they might, might think you're not slowing down right, anymore. Right. And or you're any ready to accelerate will, again. Any car that was right. Any car that comes up behind you won't see those brake lights. Uh, it's funny because actually, if, if you think about it, well, we didn't talk about this with the other, other Hyundai Kia Genesis stuff, but the reality is you can slow down because people are going to talk about this. You can slow down a car with a manual transmission, right? Sh sure. Shift down a couple right. gears and you're going to slow down. You can sh downshift an automatic transmission car as well. But these EVs are slowing down dramatically. They and are. then in the case of the Mercedes one, yeah, you could put your car, I guess, in park or something at a stoplight and then your brake lights wouldn't yeah. be on. But these are instances yeah. where people truly are going to do this and if they don't know you're not going to know yeah there's no need for it i mean the reality is most people are sitting there with their foot on the brake while they're at a light or a stop right, sign right. waiting or or something right that and there's no software or functional reason this can't be solved right, right. so we should be we should do it and <laughs> so uh so as with Hyundai Kia Genesis, we reached out to Mercedes, to their PR team to say, hey, this is what we uncovered. This is what's happening with your your EVs. You know, is there something that, you know, maybe you want to fix or, right. or change? And they said, again, another non-answer answer. <laughs> uh, we were told the brake lamp control is not a design element. It functions in compliance with regulations. Brake lamps are not required to illuminate while the vehicle is stationary and the brake pedal is not depressed. So again, they're going back to no federal motor vehicle safety standards say sure. the brake lights have to be on if you don't have the brake pedal depressed, even though, of course, the, the car did slow down yeah, with one absolutely. pedal driving. Right, so, right. Um, and so you have a recommendation for Mercedes. We had a recommendation for Hyundai Kia Genesis <laughs> yeah, EV drivers. Right. Now you have a recommendation for Mercedes EV drivers, correct, yeah, Alex? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you can use the, the one pedal, the strong recuperation, and as you're decelerating, it's going to kick the lights on, like you said. But as you're coming to the stop, you should reach over with your foot and press the actual brake pedal. Um, to, to make sure that the to lights make sure they come, come on and they stay on until yeah. you're ready to drive. 
Um, An actual human interaction with a car. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and and same thing there. If you if you decide to use the coasting mode or the the regular regen, that's not a full one pedal. Um, mm. You're still going to get all that regen if you use the physical brake pedal. So same type of blending system there. So, but you'll need to put you'll need to use the physical brake pedal to come to a full stop because it, you know. So then you'll have then you'll have the the brake lights on. Yep. So the bottom line is manufacturers are abiding by the rules and the laws, but the bigger issue is we need to change the rules and the laws. I think there's a reason they're there. <laughs> yeah, right? here's the thing. <laughs> Stay tuned because maybe we're going to see some of these automakers make these changes just purely for the safety of their of their drivers and the other drivers out Correct. there. That's what we're hoping is going to happen. Correct. But we also hope that NHTSA will make some pretty serious changes mm -hmm. directly related to EVs as the European Union has done uh, for EVs over there. Right? And it, check out uh, consumerreports.org and read uh, Mike's awesome story. Alex is super uh, uh, highlighted in that as well. You guys did great work on that. And Kevin, what a great timely question. Right. Really, really awesome. Thanks for tuning into this bonus episode, which was produced by, of course, super producer Dave Abrams and edited by Anatoly the Great Shumsky. Make sure you check out our regular episode of Talking Cars. Just a reminder, keep your questions coming to talkingcars at iCloud.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.